Hi guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney if you don't know me already and on my channel I react to a lot of things about America but in today's video we are checking out something kind of related, military related, really interesting. We're checking out, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Simo ha, Heya, 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 the deadliest sniper in military history. Now he is from Finland and actually this is a guaranteed video request from Sean thank you so much Sean for sending this one through so he's known as the deadliest sniper in recorded military history um Finland was a part of Russia until 1917 I did not know that wow I did not know that um Finland fought a brief civil war in 1918 it was between the reds and the whites so the communists and the capitalists the white swan and Finland was now an independent nation. Stalin, or Stalin, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, ordered an invasion of Finland in 1939 to reclaim Russia's lost territory. Crazy guys, I've already learned so much just from that snippet, so thank you, Sean. But yeah, without any further ado, we are going to get straight into today's video. <laughs> World War II broke out in 1939. The Soviet Union decided to invade Finland while everyone else was preoccupied with the war in Europe. But a sniper named Simo Heiha came to Finland's defense. Heiha hey allegedly eliminated a staggering 505 enemy soldiers, which, if accurate, would make him the single deadliest sniper in history. Holy Today we're looking at the man Simo Heiha and his unbelievable marksmanship. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. Simo would have wanted it that way. <laughs> All right, let's get sniping. As you might imagine, the invading Soviet soldiers grew to be straight up terrified of Heiha. Having to patrol the blanched Finnish wilderness with the knowledge that Heiha could be out there waiting to ping them with a spectacular long distance shot earned him the nickname Belia Smert, which is Russian for white death. However, Heiha's fellow Finnish soldiers had a completely different name for him. They called him Taika Ampuya, Magic Shooter. While that nickname may have been as accurate as Heiha himself, we have to admit it is somewhat less intimidating than White Death. Yeah, that is true. Simo's exact sniper count varies depending on the source. Some suggest he downed as many as 542 what? Soviet soldiers with his rifle, but no one claims he eliminated any less than 505. This makes him the most effective sniper in any war, with Soviet sniper Ivan Sidorenko sitting at a close second with 500 kills. However, Heiha's count may him. even be higher. Rather than stay at a comfortable right. distance behind his sniper rifle for the entire war, Heiha may have also cut down several hundred enemy combatants with a submachine gun. If true, that would put his count at approximately 800. Oh See, my that God. is a frightening number. Impressive, sure, but Holy cow, you're really good at your job. <laughs> yeah, the winter real. war lasted for a single winter, as its name suggests, which means Heiha was putting in serious work. In order to achieve his staggering record, Heiha was eliminating an average of five to six enemy soldiers every day. Of course, some days were better than others. Heiha racked up a terrifying 40 confirmed kills in a single day, scoring 25 and 20 on two other record days. The cloud of perpetual death in which he lived saw him promoted from corporal to second lieutenant, the biggest rank jump in the history of Finland's military. Wow. Heiha did not use a scope to forge his legendary sniper count. He preferred to use the plain old iron sight on his rifle. Yeah, no scope. He's just an all-around old-fashioned badass. What the Beyond heck? being hardcore, there was a strategic reason for this beyond just showing off. Heiha recognized that scopes made his enemies an easy target. In addition to making the target slightly bigger, scopes would glint in the sunlight, allowing Heiha to spot enemy snipers before they spotted him. At the time, every Finnish citizen was required to do one year of military service, and Heiha had done his 14 years earlier, back in 1925. That was the extent of his military experience. He did join the Finnish Civil Guard as reservist, which is essentially the equivalent to the U.S. National Guard, but he stuck to a civilian life of hunting and farming right up until the Soviets decided to invade in 1939, right. at which point he was summoned back to service. Right. 
If his hunting record was anything like his war record, we suspect the deer around Heha's home had a nickname for him too. I After swear. he completed his year of mandatory service in 1925, Heha was given the option to purchase his service weapon, a standard bolt action rifle. He bought the gun and spent the next decade and a half mastering it. When he was called back to oh, duty really? during the Winter War, Heha brought his old bolt action rifle, turning down a more modern rifle with advanced optics. The extreme cold, which ranged anywhere from minus 20 to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, caused frequent weapon malfunctions among his fellow soldiers. But Heha's experience with his bolt action BFF allowed him to keep the gun functional throughout the winter. While only having minimal military experience, Heihau wasn't possessed by the Lord of Incredible Aim. He developed his skill from being a competitive sharpshooter, having grown up a few miles away sure. from the Civil Guard shooting range, which held annual contests. Heihau regularly participated in these competitions, packing his house full of trophies. Among his accomplishments was the ability to hit a target with his rifle 16 times in a minute at a range of 500 feet, a talent best described as supernatural. Oh Heihau was deployed to the gosh. Kola battlefield, where he and 31 other soldiers were tasked with holding off an invading what? force of 4,000 Soviet troops. Despite having fewer men on the roster than a college football team, Heihau's group managed to hold their ground for the entire winter. What? That's some good goal line defense right there. It's insane. He and his fellow Finns had a few other advantages beyond his angel of death status as a sniper. For instance, the Soviet troops all wore bright green uniforms, which made them stand out like decorated Christmas trees against the snowy white landscape. What also didn't help the Soviets was they lacked officers with any silly. leadership skills, mainly because Stalin had them all executed when he purged the USSR of any potential political opponents. And even though the Soviet invasion of Finland was technically successful, they only managed to capture a relatively small amount of border territory, leaving the rest of the country intact. All told, the Soviets suffered nearly 400,000 casualties during the Winter War, compared to the 66,000 suffered by Finland. Most snipers shoot while lying flat on their stomachs because it gives enemies a smaller target to aim at. Heha fired from a sitting position because he felt the position was better for his aim. He didn't worry too much about making himself a bigger target as he was just a biscuit over five feet tall and would conceal himself in snowbanks and put snow in his mouth to hide his breath. Additionally, wow, Heha would not... pack snow in front of his rifle barrel or pour water on it to freeze it so that smoke would not rise from it after he fired and give away his position. And in perhaps the biggest departure from sniper etiquette, Rather than going for the head, Heha aimed for the center mass of his targets, which is effective in wartime, but won't do him any favors on the Black Ops 4 <laughs> leaderboards. <laughs> Heha's reputation as the John Wick of Finnish snipers eventually drew the ire of the Soviet commanders, who finally grew tired of his nonsense and began targeting him directly. Because getting anywhere near Heha was out of the question, they began hammering his general location with artillery strikes. When those didn't work, the Soviets sent teams of counter snipers to take him out, but Heha, hey. being the sniper's sniper, dispatched them with bone chilling ease. Holy. Finally, one Soviet this sniper got lucky and blasted Heha in the jaw with an exploding round. Despite being described by one friend as having half of his head missing, Heha refused to die, and after days of reconstructive surgery, he finally regained consciousness, the day wow. after the Winter War had ended. Despite getting a portion of his face blown entirely off his dome in a time when medicine was still largely experimental, Heha survived World War II and went back to hunting and farming. The Finnish government actually gave him a farm in 1961, presumably both to reward him for his service and they probably wanted to stay on his good side. Heha took up dog breeding and continued hunting, winning the Rookalati Hunting Society's Game Cup five years in a row. In 1970, he moved into a small apartment where he lived out the rest of his days before passing away at age 96 in 2002. That's right, the deadliest sniper in World War II lived long enough to have witnessed the rise of popularity of in sync. Simo Heha left his quiet farm life in the winter of 1939 to become the most effective sniper in history, racking up over 500 confirmed kills without even using a scope before returning home to live out the rest of the 20th century in peace.
What do you think of the White Death? Let us know in the comments and check out some of these other videos of our weird history. It's amazing, like unimaginable, right? Like I can't even fathom this story. How did 31 Finnish soldiers hold off, what was it, 4,000 4, Soviet unions people? I mean, I'm just, I'm honestly just speechless. <laughs> like, I can't even grasp how many, how, like, how good he was. That's incredible. He bought his gun and, like, practiced with it, right? He really got to know. That was, like, his baby, probably. And when he did get called back, he just, first of all, he knew his gun so, so well. So, there's that. But just so smart surrounding like in the snow mounds and putting snow in his mouth so no one can see his breath. Like who thinks of that, you know? That's really amazing. Um, I'm really glad to hear that, not that he got shot, obviously, um, but amazing that he survived and was able to live a long, long life until he passed away in his old age. Really, I, I really assumed that he was going to be shot and killed, but really great to hear that he wasn't. Of course, I can't help but think about all these people who received the shots on the other side, right? That's the sad thing about war, like, people are losing their lives no matter, you know, what side you're on, you know? Um, a person is a person, so I can't help but think about the other side as well but he was defending his country right so he did what he had to do for his country and he did a great job in protecting his country and his fellow soldiers so in war you do what you gotta do you know you do what you gotta do because if it's if you don't do what you gotta do then you're gonna die right so that's the, that's how it goes. But crazy man, five, at least what, no less than 505 kills, but they think it could go up to 800. That's crazy, one person, that's crazy guys. Thank you so much to Sean for sending through this video. Super, super interesting. I'm really mind blown and kind of speechless at this story. It's just absolutely insane. Like, I can't even fathom it, honestly. Um, and I actually learned a lot from this video, so thank you so much. Um, there was a lot of stuff in this video and also in your explanation that I had no idea about, so thank you so much for that. <laughs> but everyone else, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you do have a video recommendation, head over to my website, which I will link down below, and you can make video recommendations on there. Like this video if you did like it, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.